Beloved of God, welcome to Worship with the Faith Community of Cross of Hope Lutheran Church this third Sunday of Advent as we continue to wait, watch, and work to prepare the way of Jesus who holds us in living community together. We'll begin by lighting our Advent wreaths, so if you continue to have your candles there at home, I'll invite you to join me in this prayer as we spend some time uh, watching the light of Christ grow in our midst. We praise you, O God, for this victory wreath that marks our days of preparation for Christ's Advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, strengthen our hearts as we wait, as we await the Lord's coming in glory. Enlighten us with your grace that we may serve our neighbors in need. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that, anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Zephaniah. Sing aloud, 
O daughter Zion, shout, O Israel, rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. A reading from Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Word of God, Word of Life. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the third chapter. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his thrashing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. While the growing light on the Advent wreath and the growing darkness outside tells us that Jesus is coming, And indeed, the Lord is near. We continue to wait and watch and listen, learn and grow together in life and faith as the living community, the body of Christ. In the coming celebration of the nativity of our Lord at Christmas and in the Christ community gathered in God's name, living in selfless community. We gather today around these stories of faith 
and around this gospel story where John the baptizer speaks, huh? the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness to whom the word of God came and was sent to proclaim a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The evangelist of the gospel of Luke records the preaching of John with a traditional prophetic critique of the crowds that were coming out to be baptized by him. Those needing to repent, responding to God's call. You brood of vipers, who warn you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is laying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Oh, well, Merry Christmas to you too, John. John's message is classic prophet. God's people have gone astray. God's prophet delivers God's message in the wilderness, where God's people were first formed, and calls for repentance, for life change. John is preparing the people here not for a baby born in a manger, but for the way of Jesus, for a lifetime journeying with God. It is about to be revealed here in Jesus, the one who is more powerful before whom John is not worthy, the one who will baptize with Holy Spirit and fire. So yeah, bear fruit worthy of repentance. From these words of context and call comes an honest Advent question. What then should we do? What then should we do? How then should we live? You could hear in this question. It's an honest question that echoes questions that will be posed to Jesus at seminal teaching moments along the journey when the lawyer and the rich ruler will ask, what must I do to inherit eternal life? First, let's look at how John addresses the, the Advent question at hand. With a teaching that is only encountered here in the Gospel of Luke, John foreshadows what will be the central theme of this Gospel and Acts of the Apostles in describing a new community of God that is the way of Jesus. Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. Whoever has food must do likewise. Tax collectors, a group of outcasts in the Gospel of Luke, typically paired with sinners, collect no more than prescribed to you. In other words, treat others honestly. Soldiers, most likely intended to be Roman soldiers representing Gentiles, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusations and be satisfied with your wages. Again, be honest with your dealings with money and with others. John first outlines how to bear fruits of repentance, life change, is to be living in selfless community, to fundamentally share and care for anyone in need, to live honestly with one another, not exploiting nor oppressing those under your influence or authority. I find the call to giving and sharing much easier to see and do than, than the recognizing and the giving up of power and privilege that the second part of this call to repentance entails. In the systems of society both then and now, the line between authority and abuse, between privilege and equality, can be thin and sometimes just, not just, as it exists. John here calls us to the work of preparing the way of Jesus, of the new community of God, where all possessions are shared and where truly everyone in need is cared for. We are the body of Christ, living together in selfless community. What John is laying out in prelude is what will be given flesh through Jesus in the two volumes of this evangelist, Luke and Acts, that to living in the way of Jesus as God calls us to is to give, share, and care through selfless service. Selfless ser service 
is the stance of the faithful disciple. Selfless service is the lens through which the faithful disciples views and understands the world. Selfless service is the basic posture of the faithful disciple toward the world through which they journey. This comes into clarity through these stories, through those stories of Jesus addressing this similar question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus tells the lawyer testing him a story, a story about a Samaritan who came upon a beaten and bloodied foreigner. Instead of passing him on by like the priest or the Levite before him, he was moved to care for this stranger in need. Go and show mercy likewise. Go and care for those in need in this world is the word of Jesus to form community as he reveals the way in which to live. Similarly, Jesus tells the rich ruler, asking the same question, you know the way to selfless living. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. And when the rich ruler gladly lives this selfless way, Jesus offers what's missing. Sell all that you own and distribute the money to the poor. Give and care, share and serve. Participate in God. Proclaim the love of God in deed as well as word. Point beyond yourself to Jesus. God's love that sustains and forms you. This was John's selfless stance to the popularity afforded him. Wondering if he was the expected Messiah. Not me. The one coming, Jesus. Living in selfless community, we look beyond ourselves through our faithful giving of money to release its control on our lives, through our faithful sharing of food for the hungry so that our neighbors are cared for, through our faithful care and hurt for and with our Muslim neighbors whose mosques was recently attacked with fire, We look beyond ourselves and point to Jesus, the revealing and yet coming of God's forgiveness, love, and life, the fruits of repentance, grown and thriving through giving and selfless care. God bless you in your waiting, in your watching, and in your work. Amen. With his heart open wide From the depths, from the heights I will bring a sacrifice With these hands lifted high Hear my song, hear my cry I will bring a sacrifice I will bring
join me in the prayers. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Holy Church, renew your church and raise up leaders who announce your good news. Grant peace to congregations and seminarians in the midst of transition. Guide the work of candidacy and call committees. Hear us, O God. Creating God, your spirit brought forth the earth and all that is in it. Breathe life into us that we are inspired to live in harmony with one another and the planet. Hear us, O oh God. Shepherding God, you lead your people in paths of righteousness. Raise up prophets in our own day who warn against captivity to greed and point us to the freedom found in generosity. Hear us, O oh God. Nurturing God, you come near in times of worry and need. Cradle us in your arms, that we trust you and are not afraid. Attend to any who are hungry, imprisoned, or ill this day. We pray for Dee, Chris, Susan, Lynn, Linda, Julia Ann, Kathy, Shannon, Karen, Lydia, David, John, Jeff, Wendy, Carol, Carmine, Bobby, Bill and Jim, Dolores, Harry, Robert, Ruth, Cap, Tony, Paul and Barb, Kim, Alan, Courtney, and all those we name now aloud or in silence. Be near to Cross of Hope and all those who grieve. Tony, Nancy and family at the death of their mother, Helen Leon. Hear us, O oh God. We give thanks for the blessing and gift of relationship and for our partners in ministry. Rainbow Trail Lutheran Camp, Family Promise, Compassion Beyond Borders, BSA Troop 126, Luther House, Lutheran Family Services, Lutheran Advocacy Ministry, Atonement Lutheran Church, Lakewood, Colorado, and Augustana Lutheran Church, Denver, Colorado. Hear us, O oh God. Rejoicing God, you exult over us in singing. Enliven the song of this assembly and bless the ministry of church musicians. With instruments and dance, join our voices to the song of all creation. Hear us, O God. We give thanks for your servants who showed us your goodness and grace. 
By the power of your Spirit, keep us steadfast in faith until we make our home with you. Hear us, O God. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. What a blessing it is to be held in and by God's love. Be invited to an outdoor worship experience on Wednesday this week, the 15th of December for our annual Las Posadas. And we'll stay on our property this year and we'll have a little biscuitito and hot chocolate uh, fellowship time outside afterwards. And so I invite you to bundle up and come on out for a little midweek worship experience again at six o'clock this week. And then you'll find in our Hopeful Happenings all of the worship opportunities for uh, Christmas time. Receive now God's blessing. The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Christ Jesus, for whom we wait. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks be to God. is hopeful the savior comes at last furrows lie open for god's creative task this the labor of people who struggle to see how god's truth and justice set everybody free people of israel you heard the prophet tell Virgin Mother will bear Emmanuel. She conceived him, God, with us, our brother whose birth restores hope and courage to children of the earth. Mountains and valleys will have to be prepared. New highways opened, new protocols declare. Almost here, God is nearing in beauty and grace. All clears every gateway, in haste come out in haste. We first saw Jesus, a baby in a crib. This Jesus today has come to live in our world. He is present in neighbors we see. Our Jesus is with us and ever sets us free.